This is my Porsche 911, and it's also the worst 911 in the entire world. But I think you should buy one. And if you don't, you might lose money. Yeah, it sounds strange, but it makes sense. So let me show you why you'd be stupid not to buy one. Porsche has been making 911s for 60 years now, and they've made a few different variations. Starting with the earliest 911s, which don't really have a special name, but can easily cost upwards of $100,000 for a nice example. They then moved to the G-Body cars, which were fairly similar, and cost around $75,000. Next came the 964 and the 993, which again are easily worth 80 or 90,000 for a manual coupe like ours. And the same goes for the models that came after ours, the 997 and the 991, which a manual Carrera of those models sells for 65 to 100,000 dollars depending on the year and mileage. The one outlier is the 996, which you can easily find for under 25,000 dollars, but like all good things, there is a catch. The 996 has a few blaring issues, and the most obvious and talked about is this. The headlights. All other 911s have round headlights, and as I always say, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But the Germans, being crazy as they are, decided at one point this would look good. Do I wish they were round? Yeah. But honestly, they're starting to grow on me. Currently, if you want a 911, the 996 is your best bet. It's the cheapest and most reasonably priced one, all because it has weird headlights. But they are going up in value like all other 911s, and I think you can ride that wave up and make some money if you buy one soon. I actually got mine when it was the cheapest manual 911 coupe in the entire country, and I only paid $15,000 for this thing. And I was able to find it using Auto Tempest, which is pretty much like a cheat code when it comes to searching for cars. And honestly, you'd be wasting your time if you don't use it. That's because it gathers all the listings from every car buying site and puts them in one place. So no more jumping from site to site to find the perfect car. Just enter the info and boom. Look, here are tons of cheap Porsche 911s that you should go buy, so go take a look at Auto Tempest now with the link in the description. I literally look at Auto Tempest every single day, but in case I missed anything, make sure you send me any cheap Porsches you find. Now, the headlights aren't the only thing wrong with these 996s. There are a few other issues, and the most talked about is probably the IMS bearing. Everyone is terrified of the IMS, and for good reason. If you didn't know, it's inside the engine, and it can fail, which will completely destroy the motor. However, you shouldn't worry too much, because it's rare, especially on the earlier cars, and if you get to it before it happens, it only costs $3,000 to fix, which Yes, does sound expensive, but you have to remember, you're buying a Porsche 911 for less money than a Honda Accord, so you have to think that you will spend some money for maintenance. The other major issue on the 996, bore scoring. And this is my friend Eric's car, which was the cheapest 911, cheaper than mine. But after the bore scoring took a, a turn on here, it is much more expensive than mine. I'm gonna let Eric kind of explain that to you. <laughs> sure, happy to, Jackson. I bought what was previously, in about 2020, the cheapest running and driving 911 in the US, or so I thought. It did run, it did drive, but it had a few notable issues. First, there was a decent bit of blue smoke that would come out of both of the exhaust pipes after it ran enough, but it was only one on startup. Additionally, a little bit of tap, tap, tap that we at first thought could be either little rod knocker sticking lifters, another problem with this car, proved not to be the case. It turned out to be the dreaded bore scoring, which at latest count affects something like four to 5% of these engines. Bore scoring is ultimately when the moving piston makes contact with the stationary cylinder wall. So you end up with the piston rubbing up and down on the cylinder wall and it creates scoring. That scoring prevents lubrication from properly occurring from the oiling of the system and that can lead to eventually enough slop in the system where the piston can rock back and forth, which cascades down the line. Eventually, you're seeping horsepower, oil's making it past the rings, and the engine is essentially in need of a complete rebuild. So it's bad, <laughs> and you don't want that is the short story on that one. However, there is something you can do before you buy your car, and that is a boroscope. So a boroscope is pretty much a little camera that can be inserted into the engine, and you can check for the bore scoring and see before you buy the car, ideally, if it's there. It's not always a surefire way. You should probably check every cylinder. Some shops just check one. That doesn't mean that there isn't bore score on the other ones. That's kind of sadly what happened to you. You, but mistakes happen, it's totally fine. However, if you're gonna buy one of these, I highly suggest you do a boroscope and hopefully avoid that issue. And then don't cold start your car in cold weather if you can help it. Now with ours, there's a few things we need to take care of. First, the car is running a little rough, so quick spark plugs and coil packs should fix that. 
Next, the transmission itself is pretty clunky, so a little fluid flush and we should be good. Lastly, and definitely most pressing, are the engine mounts. Whenever I shift, and really whenever I'm driving around, the engine feels like it wants to drop out of the car. So those definitely need to be fixed soon. Before I do anything else to the car, I need to take care of that work. And if I were to bring it to a Porsche dealership, it would cost me over $5,000. And honestly, I don't have that kind of money right now. Do I know how to do the work myself? Not really, but I am going to try. So if you want to see that video, make sure you stay tuned. Now, all that might sound scary, but let me tell you why this car is so great that you should look past its flaws. Everyone seems to pretend like this isn't a real 911, and it's priced more like a Boxster. Yet it looks like a 911, sounds like a 911, and drives like a 911. And this was Sally from Cars. It doesn't get more 911-y than that. Everything that makes 911s great is part of this car. And people are undervaluing them heavy right now. As I said, you can find these all day for $20,000. And for a car that was made to compete with supercars, well, that's a pretty good deal. If you missed the first videos, we bought this car because it was my father's dream car. Sadly, he passed away from cancer before he could make this dream come true. So now we're building it into the ultimate Porsche 911 to honor him. And to do this, we're turning it into the ultimate off-road 911. And because of the price of these 996s, I don't feel bad changing it like that. And they can also make for great track cars. That's why you see these 996s at tracks all across the country. With a few simple mods, you actually have quite the car on your hands. And that's really the beauty of the Porsche 911. You can make them whatever you want, and that's why they've appreciated so much in value. Like I said, these are probably gonna continue to rise in value. So here's what you should do if you want one, which you should now. Step one, you should go to Auto Tempest and find a car that you like. Then, you should definitely get a pre-purchase inspection. As we mentioned, these cars can have some weird issues, so make sure you get it boroscoped and just fully checked out. I didn't get mine checked out because I'm an idiot, but you're much smarter than me. And if it passes your inspection, you should go for it, because this is an amazing car. I love mine, and I know you would love one too. Also, make sure you subscribe.